Hello, my name is Michael Kibler of Kibler's Typewriter Company, and today I would like to share with you a new addition to my typewriter collection. I'm very excited to get this new machine, and uh, hey, I'll just show it to you. What we have here is a Blickensdurfer number no. six, or uh, the aluminum number no. five, called number no. six. Take this out for you guys. Isn't that beautiful? The Blickensdurfer number six is basically an aluminum version of the number five, if I said, as I said earlier. Uh, this was meant to appeal to the traveling businessman or traveling worker or writer or what have you and uh, was only five pounds uh, the actual machine was only five pounds thus it was called the five pound secretary as a business slow and it has a folding uh, space bar down here to um, fit into the case easier to make the case smaller and I'm just going to read off the decal right now number six Wiggins are for Stamford Connecticut USA and uh, that's copper uh, name shield right there. This is all uh, pure aluminum. And right here you have your extra tabulating attachment. Uh, most of those were lost that weren't screwed on, but this is a clip-on, as you can see here. It goes from 00, zero, zero, zero to 6. And that was to help ga the typist gauge the margins of the tabulator. All right, so. Lickensdurfer is a very unique machine. Um, they uh, were produced by George C. Lickensdurfer, and uh, it was very, they were very successful for a time, but were eventually um, phased out by the type bar machines such as Underwood or Royal. And it was a single element typewriter which means they only ha produced type from a single source, in this case a type wheel. You can see it. Type right here. And capitals raises it. And figures raises it. And this was vulcanized rubber. Same with the early Hammond type shuttles. And when you press the key, let's do V, the type, uh, type wheel would rotate until it went to the correct letter. And then down here, you have a see that uh, rubber not the rubber that right down here you have your uh, ink roller that would roll ink onto the typeface as it went down and would hit the paper so very swift action very nice uh, aluminum was still in its um, early stages in terms of mechanical development so uh, this is a very nice machine for uh, the fact that it's from 1910s. Speaking of which I'll just read off the serial number really quickly that would be 159341 which was made in the 1910s uh, actually it was after the Blickensdurfer uh, 7 have already been produced for a while so this was basically just uh, an even lighter version of the 5 if you couldn't afford the 7 and this would have cost around sixty dollars new back in the 1910s uh... you could have nice velvet line carrying case over here blue velvet and uh... i have a repro manual right here it's actually a for a blinkins or for a five and it's to help uh... your typing uh... skills when using it because as you can see down here there's no QWERTY. This is, uh, I'm not pronouncing that, but you can see D-H-I-A-T-N-E-N-S-O-R. Uh, Di-Tensor, di Di-Tensor, di whatever. Yeah, it's pretty much a mouthful. Um, the person that I got this from donated six typewriters to my collection, and I posted a bulletin on YouTube about that earlier. Yeah, this nice man, Mr. Kirby McCullen, whom this video is um, 
accredited to gave me this and he completely disassembled the machine uh, oiled and cleaned all the parts, polished everything put that together so it works amazing and in order to uh, I'm just going to show you the functions of it really quickly alright so as I said earlier pressing a key moves the type head the type wheel against the rubber roller which advances, advances the carriage one and it works very much on the same principle as the Mignon does if you've seen my other video uh, two th segments will push the carriage over one to the left there's no mainspring this was made to make it lighter and more reliable and you take like a Smith Premier which was a machine that was popular around that time a uh, type R machine and which had several thousand parts and the Blickensdurfer only had around 200 parts and I just want to show you this neat little patent date uh, decal here patent patent I can't talk today yeah in order to change unfortunately they don't make uh, rubber not rubber uh, ink rollers today but in order to change it you would fold back the uh, paper scale and you would lift up I'll get you a close up here I'm so glad I'm not restricted to the 15 minute time limit that YouTube used to enforce you just lift it up right here and you would just pull the two prongs apart right here replace the uh, roller then flip it back paper scale up, you're ready to rock and uh, I like to, for the benefit of all those who have a Blickensurfer and are not quite sure how to use it I would like to offer my help with respects to changing the type wheel in about a moment. And I'd like to go first over the accessories that my Blick came with in its case. And this is the cool one of the cool parts. Okay, so up here you have a compartment right here that you just unhook. And you have a whole bunch of accessories. This is a little first aid tin full of uh dis um, discarded uh, rollers, ink rollers. This is a vial that would you would have different colors in, different color inks in, and you would store all your. These are real glass. You don't see that anymore. It's all plastic now. Uh, you'd store your rollers in, and they came with four, I think. Yeah, four. And it comes with this machine came with uh, six type wheels, including the one on the machine. So I'm going to show you how to change the uh, font, the type wheel on your Blickensdurfer. Alright, I'll just put this stuff away. I've always wanted a Blick and now I finally had one. And I didn't even have to buy it. It was donated to me. And that's just awesome. So thank you Mr. McCollum, if you ever watch this. I'm just glad there are still nice people like you in the world. Alright, so let's talk about the type wheel first. Take one off. As you can see, all the type is neatly placed around the wheel in three rows. On the bottom, you have circles, except for the front. This is the front because you can tell it's a square slot. And you have some uh, miscellaneous letters and numbers down there. So you orient first. So see the square through the camera. And then this little, this is a little, um, spring clamp that you turn uh, left or right in order to release or decrease release or increase pressure to the sh main type shaft of the machine so let's do that here to disassemble turn it turn this little sp uh, metal and it will lift right off put that aside, orient it right, front, and should just click on. Now it's ready to roll. This clamp keeps the type, 
cylinder from type wheel to, from flying off when you hit the caps or figs. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, one other thing, guys, um, before I leave you to get your own blick, I'd like to recommend a book called The Five Pound Secretary an Illustrated History of the Blickensdurfer Typewriter by Robert Blickensdurfer and Paul Robert. And you can see there's my machine right there. Well, not literally mine, but a copy of my machine. And uh, it's a very good book if you're interested in Blickensdurfer or typewriters in general. It's very informative very useful for figuring out the hidden features of your blick. Alright? Alright, so um, this has been a Kibler's Typewriter Company video production. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my email or YouTube channel. If you have any video requests, I take those too. And, uh, yeah, see you guys later. Bye.